You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hello, this is Anders from Cadaver, and you're listening to Bot's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bot's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bot's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to welcome Anders Odin, who is the guitarist, bassist, and vocalist of Cadaver. Cadaver is back after 15 years and is set to release their first full-length album entitled Edder and Bile, November 27th via Nuclear Blast Records. Also, check out Cadaver's second single and video for Reborn, which is out now. And check out their first track, Circle of Morbidity. This first track also features guest vocals from Jeff Becerra of The Mighty Possessed. So we're going to be talking to Anders about all this stuff. So Anders, welcome to the show, and how you doing, man? I'm good. Thank you for having me on the show. Not a problem whatsoever. So what have you been up to during this crazy pandemic other than talking and promoting the new album, Edder and Bile? Well, um, to be quite honest, I had a rough uh, year with um, health uh, issues myself before everybody else turned into this uh, post-apocalyptic uh, pandemic thing. Mm -hmm. I had uh, colon cancer. So I, I survived that, and I'm on the other side of that, so I'm cancer-free now. So I've basically been going through hell and back um, and uh, seeing the world kind of collapse around me and then, you know, finally get to, uh, you know, crawl out of my hole and let you all tell, uh, tell you all about uh, some new music, which we probably need more than ever now when we're all home and, you know, sit there and watch uh, the 14th TV series and uh, the 16th film that people tell us to watch and then dive into some new music would be good. First off, man, congratulations on beating cancer because that's no joke. And I want everybody to understand that that uh, that's that's hell on someone because I've saw my grandpa oh, yeah, go sure. through that. So. Awesome, man. I'm sure. glad, you, glad you got that taken care of. So oh, yeah. how, how good does it feel to have music out for Cadaver after 15 years? It's amazing. It feels like uh, we be really belong in the, in the flora of uh, extreme metal bands. And uh, as being one of the original first bands uh, coming out of Norway doing this and still be able to do something with it and uh, take it to a new level now 30 years later feels uh, really really amazing when this band went to a hiatus did you think that oh god you know there's no more cadaver or deep down inside did you not want to let it go well deep down inside I never really wanted to let it go because I felt that um that was my platform with extreme music. I never really wanted to form a you know, brand new band with that idea because I already felt that I, I had that idea. And, uh, um, you know, it's just a matter of uh, getting the right people to be a part of the same idea. And uh, finally, I found um, a partner in crime in uh, Dirk Fredburen on drums. And, uh, now we're here with a new album and uh, feeling stronger than ever, really. Were you a little nervous releasing this album right now during this crazy pandemic? Or did you want to get this out to the masses and say, here's some fresh music? Uh, it's the latter for me, because, I mean, back in the day when I got into this kind of music, uh, I never really thought of uh, watching those bands live or paying attention to tour circuits or whatever. It was just about the music and uh, it's, uh, you know... The recording um, of a, a piece of music can have a very good uh, effect and uh, touch you in in a way that uh, a live experience uh, never can, or uh, it's simply a very different um, art form, I would say. So uh, make creating, recording, and releasing music, uh, whether it's during hard or 
not so hard times. Um, it's always important and uh, probably more important during hard times than in in better days, really, because what I said, uh, you know, um, being, being in quarantine in Norway isn't really as hard as in many other countries. And uh, we have been stri stricken very lightly by this. Uh, but I see that a lot of friends around the world struggle. And, um, you know, when you're inside all the time and you have seen, like I said, the 16th uh, uh, series that people recommend you and the uh, <laughs> uh, 100th film that people recommend you, getting into new music is uh, always uh, the option where you can really dig into something new. And I, I think I've been listening to more new music than I normally would throughout this period as well. So I think it's uh, a good period to, to new stuff, really. Are you impressed with some of the bands that are out there right now with, with some of the new music that's been put out? Yeah, uh, there is. Uh, when, when, when you ask me like that, I can't come up with even one name to name drop. But I, <laughs> there, there's a lot of things which I'm checking out for sure, which I haven't really uh, done before. Either people send it to me or people nod in someone's direction or I just check it out. But there is a lot of really interesting things coming out right now, which... Uh, I like, and uh, at the same time, I'm also creating new stuff myself. So, you know, it's just this balance. So, you know, checking out new stuff and uh, creating new stuff, which is, you know, a good place to be in. What's impressed or excited you the most about making this new album, Edder and Bile? If anything, man, is there anything that sticks out about it the most for you, possibly? Well, the most exciting thing for me was to uh, really work with Dirk on uh, all the details with the songs to get them, you know, to sound right. And uh, just to play with such an amazing uh, drummer in itself was uh, really, you know, kicking my ass a lot. And for me, wanting to be, you know, outdo whatever I've done before. And I really put uh, my heart and soul and all my work in to do uh, as best as I could, you know, to um, not be the, you know, a, a, the, the worst musician on the record. <laughs> <laughs> but I always feel like I am, you know, there's always someone better than me on the record, which, which is good, you know, you should always aim for better. Now, you mentioned you worked with uh, Dirk on this, but you've been working on new material for Cadaver for over a decade. But how did that last puzzle piece come together with Megadeth drummer and former soul work drummer Dirk uh, Verburen? Yeah, you know, uh, it was actually already way back in 2014, early 14, when we met the first time. Uh, and the reason back then was that he was sitting in on drums for um, Frost with Soterikon doing two f uh, festival shows at this uh, cruise ship festival, 70,000 tons of metal. Mm -hmm. And uh, while working on that and doing those shows, we were talking about uh, different things. And I come to realize that uh, Dirk was uh, a huge Cadaver fan. Like he knew all the old song titles and how the songs were going on drums and stuff like that. So I realized that he was not only just aware of the band, but like really a huge fan. And uh, at that time I had lots of bits and pieces of uh, demos and uh, stuff lying around. So I just gathered when he's told me to just send him stuff. So I just, just did that. Like, I think I sent him like 10 songs or something and he came back with amazing drum arrangements from one song to the next. So I was like, okay, this is, this is uh, something that we could build on. And uh, we just, you know, Went into the studio first time me and him actually together was in 2016, and at that time he had so, had started to play with Megadeth, but uh, we just kept this as our own uh, secret side the thing. And uh, after writing more and more, we just realized let's just do it, make it make it formal, and say that you know this is Cadaver coming back, and uh, we're both. Full, full members of the band so um, he's committed as much as me and uh, without him I wouldn't really be doing this right now I think Any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on the album? I, I know it must change every time that you listen to it or you talk about it I know these are your babies but uh, are there any that stand out for you personally? Yeah for me personally uh, one of the tracks that really kicked me into a new kind of writing style with this was uh, uh, this song called Years of Nothing 
which uh, I think is one of the it's the typical album track, but I tend to always like those. So it's like uh, it's uh, one of my favorites. You know, I, I know you've been doing this for a very, very long time, Anders. But would you say this is a, a breath of fresh air for you, possibly? Yeah, it's it certainly feels like that. It feels very uh, naturally and uh, unforced in all kinds of ways, mm-hmm. and uh, probably something that comes with age, being sure of yourself better, maybe, or uh, if not sure, but you know yourself better, so you you just know what you can do and what you should do in a different way so um with with all kinds of insights i had through working with other bands and other people and stuff i uh, learned too much so i just tried to put all my you know know-how and knowledge into this one project and make it as unique and special as one possibly can now are there any tracks that didn't make this album that we could see on another cadaver album or ep possibly down the road well, there was an EP prior to the album with the, the songs that didn't make it to the album called okay. Don't Give a Fuck that came out in uh, April. But there there was there, there's always you know, snippets and things which uh, you never made uh, well finished uh, while you were making something. And some suddenly things surface later. But I think I, I can tr- truly say that I already have enough demos to make a new album uh, so I'm sitting now trying to figure out where to start on the, you know, call it, I wouldn't call it leftover material because it's all, all material right there and uh, just uh, waiting to get worked on. So I'm, I'm always creative like that. I am recording studio set up uh, so I can just go and record whenever I want. So, uh, you know, when, when you have a setup like that, you can just, uh, you know, dive into your archives and figure out what to do or just do new stuff. It's always something to be inspired by. Was there a song that you guys were working on that totally ended up sounding different or took a major turn than what it started out to be? Yeah, I would say um, the, the song the, called um, Morgue Ritual. Uh, I had those riffs lying around since... Um, 1988 wow. and uh i just realized that, that uh, yeah if i rewrote a few things in that song and uh had a different drum beat to to some of it it might work and then uh, what i did then was just to uh, basically take those riffs uh arrange them kind of like it they they were but a little different and then let Dirk just uh, come up with the modern drums throughout the whole thing. And then, voila, we had a very different sounding track to what I had for, from, you know, from material from the eighties. So sometimes you can do that. And uh, it's uh, always also a little revealing on your, on your influences at the time i think uh, you know in 88 i was i knew i know i was very influenced by creator and uh, some of those things back then would have probably sounded much more like it i tried to you know do something they would do but now when we did this it didn't feel like that at all it just felt like uh, something original that i had lying around so you know why not make a song from from the eighties and bring it back and uh, finalize it in the two thousands? <laughs> see, folks, don't <laughs> don't get rid of that old stuff because you never know when it could see the light of day. Oh, yep, that's a good uh, treasure uh, treasure right there. If you have some stuff from the eighties so that oh, yeah. wasn't used, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Now you you heard possessed for the first time in nineteen eighty five, and now vocalist Jeff Becerra possessed is doing vocals on Circle of Morbidity. For this album, how special is this for Cadaver to work with him finally, man? Oh, man. That's that's a biggie. That's like, uh, if if somebody made like a a time machine just to tell me this one thing back then, it's just like, (laughs) if that that was the only information coming through the time machine to... To thirteen-year-old Anders saying that uh, one day this guy will be on your album. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like, yeah, right. What's going on now? You know, it, they were as important 
for uh, for my view of extreme metal as anyone, you know, because uh, they basically changed the way what was thrash metal sounded like and in, by themselves invented that metal, you know, uh, with the kind of vocals and the guitar sound and the, the topics, everything. They just had it on their own a long while before anybody else did the same kind of direction. So uh, Jeff is one of those uh, pioneers that also kind of got his band lost and then found found his band back. So mm-hmm. kind of have a have a similar story in that respect too. So uh, we feel very connected now, me and Jeff, which is really nice. Edder and Bile was produced by the band as well as Adair Doffenbach, who also handled the engineering. Do you like having this freedom to produce your own music when you want to and have that freedom, man, and no pressure added? Yes, I think that's the most important thing for any artist is to just create the music uh, from the top of your head and have the chance to do it uh, in full freedom because, after all, that's what people tend to get into uh, if they do, you know, uh, because this this kind of music has to be original and stand out on its own. And whether it attracts a bigger or smaller audience within the framework of that uh, has to do with a lot of other things. But uh, as, as long as you can 100% say that you did all you could do, uh, I think that's a very important thing. Having said that, having you know, bringing other people in to help you out with the uh, practical things and also come with the uh, feedback sometimes, you know, that is relevant to what you're doing in the studio. It's uh, obviously a huge um, thing to, to not waste too much time on things that doesn't work or whatever. And the other year was uh, tremendously great uh, engineer and also producer coming with... Um, relevant uh, hints and uh, you know ideas and on what how to do things this or that way and um, I don't think anything he suggested didn't work out better you know mm-hmm. but, uh, we basically wanted to have uh, the album the vision for the album was for sure ours but uh, you know him as an engineer and the producer I would you know, love to work with the any day. And I, I'm pretty sure we'll work on the next album together too, uh, for sure. Because uh, he's uh, just one of those. If you if you find one uh, like a studio companion who's who understands you, it's so it makes a huge difference for anyone. Oh so, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, just one of those things. Um, and I, I love to work with new and different people all the time in that respect. But that. Uh, and when you find someone uh, you haven't worked with before that really works out for you, that's uh, really, really cool. The photo for the artwork was taken by Hannah Von Buren, and the layout was created by Justin Bartlett. Let's talk about working with those folks on this for the album cover and the layout. Yeah. Um, Hannah, obviously married to um, Dirk. Uh, uh, she's a photographer and a very, very good one in her own respect. And... Um, when we talked about doing photos for uh, the album, we had some ideas, and uh, she just um, really came up with some um, extra ideas and uh, brought in uh, Missy with all those props and the things, and uh, that gave the whole um, photo session a uh, much more uh, uh, much more depth and variation and. Uh, we could do something which I hadn't really been able to do in that way with the cadaver in the past was to, you know, have the envisions of, um, have like Im- images of the band also being bent towards an idea and a concept for, for an album and a title and everything. So to make it more like a whole was a very, very important thing for me. So when we got those images, I talked to Justin, which is a designer I've known for 20 years about my ideas. And in his initial idea was that he didn't really understand what I was trying to do, I think. Uh, and he didn't really, he liked those images, but he didn't really see how um, it would work uh, until 
he put everything together the way I said, and I was like, oh, wow, this this is very different from what I, you know, mo- most metal bands, uh, I wouldn't say most, but uh, many have cover sleeves with um, drawings or uh, something like that, just not, not photos. But in the 80s, when I, you know, started to like metal, band photos and extreme band photos were you know really common as album covers and i just thought you know how to do that again in a different way and uh, i think we managed to do something that really stands out and uh, has a a very different flair from other um, metal cover sleeves right now anyway so my aim was to be on a different planet than everybody else. Mm-hmm. And I think we succeeded. What do you hope, Anders, everyone takes away or message you hope they hear while listening to any of Cadaver's music in general? What do you hope they get from it, man? I hope they um, get the sense of what I'm trying to do, which basically I don't want to over-explain, but uh, I think uh, I write music in a little bit different way than uh, uh, I would call conventional death metal or black metal bands. I write lyrics that is very, very personal and uh, dealing about the human condition and our, you know, uh, ho- hopes and fears and envy and tests and everything we have inside us. And uh, I, basically, I want music to be a positive force within the lives of anyone who listens to it. And uh, if they can be your companion in 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 your darkness or bring you out of the darkness or uh, lead you to more realization of who you are well the better you know i just want people to to listen to what i'm doing and uh, see if it works for them if it doesn't well i'm i'm sorry but uh, it's not meant for everybody but for those who like it i think you will enjoy it even more Right, right. It's not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Are you wanting to take this project out on the road eventually? Oh, yeah. We have, we have uh, lots of plans for live uh, gigs. So uh, we actually have one show in Oslo the 10th of December. Uh, right now, it looks like that's going to be fine. Uh, there's, I mean, the, all those restrictions uh, we have still makes it uh, uh, possible here to do seated shows for 200 people which isn't ideal for a metal show but it's what you have so we'll, we'll see what's going on but um, we are planning to do live shows of course down the road yeah and this is just my opinion only i, I think that when this pandemic is over i, I don't think we're going to go back to the norm of having all these big huge concerts if that makes sense in festivals because i think there's going to be a new norm on how we do that from here on out that's just my opinion yeah, I think that's uh, that's going to be a different scenario for a longer time than we think right now, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe uh, you know, if it's super safe to go back to how it was, maybe one day, maybe never. We don't know, basically. Now, I know back in the day when you were growing up, you had a lot of albums and a lot of songs to choose from. But did you have that certain album or song when you were younger that just you know gave you inspiration or? Made you feel like everything's going to be better, or, or just let you escape? With if so, what was it? Well, I think one album that will always be a very, very important album from my metal uh, upbringing is uh, Master Puppets with uh, Metallica. Yes, sir. Because I, I got that album, and I got to see them two days before um, uh, Burton died. So um, I saw him live uh, the second to last show we ever did. So because of those things, it's always a very special album to me. Uh, and uh, if, if I had to choose one song, I guess Sanitarium or thing that should not be. So let me ask you this, Andrews. And that, that, that album saved my life as a kid. I'm not kid. I'm not joking. That's the God's honest truth. That album saved my life in my darkest days when my father was sick. So oh, yeah. seeing Cliff Burton, the mighty Cliff Burton, as I should say, Seeing him live, how was that, man? Because I want somebody's insight. You got to see that live. How was it? Well, uh, it was as amazing as any of those videos you can try to see that him live. But I mean, the whole 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 persona and the whole 
the whole vibe of Metallica with him um, at their prime, that was uh, very, very special. You could just tell how special he was in the band too, because I remember his um, his bass solo thing, and in that set, his him just being on the stage alone, jamming, uh, was a very, very important thing. Everybody knew that that was coming up, and when that happened, it was like, you know, uh, never seen anything like it or heard anything like it. The, the whole whole uh, room just uh, exploded, you know, singing along to those uh, bass melodies. And um, I've seen them many, many times afterwards, but uh, just one of those things, you know. Uh, he, he's uh, one of those guys you can't replace in the group. So, yeah, yeah it's just uh, very, very fortunate that I got to see them. And I got to say this, too, that Scott Pingle, who is with the San Francisco Symphony, paid tribute during Metallica's s and did the Anastasian Pulling Teeth bass solo, and he knocked it out of the ballpark. So if you've not got to see that or anybody's not got to see that, please check it out on YouTube. It's there. Go check it out. Check all this out because it is freaking phenomenal. He did, he nailed it. So I'm glad he did. Okay, I'm cool. Did, yeah, did, did, did. I'll check that out. All right, Anders, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy this new album, get ready to drop. Tour dates, all this stuff, when everything gets back to normal, how can they do that, sir? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you can uh, keep on searching for Cadaver online and find things. We post things all the time on our socials, and uh, we'll uh, keep on doing that and making new music and uh, hopefully get to see uh, you guys live out there one day. Uh, until then, just have a phenomenal time. And before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for my show? I can do that, sure. Hello, this is Anders from Cadaver, and you're listening to Bot's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Hour podcast. Please get out check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link, YouTube link, and all that good stuff that's associated with Bod's Mayhem Hour, and you want to give a like and share on our YouTube page. Also, check out the first full-length album after 15 years from Cadaver, entitled Eder and Bile, which is going to be released November 27th via Nuclear Blast Records. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. So, Anders, man, I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck and keep rocking for us, sir. Thank you very much, and uh, it was a pleasure to be on your show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.